So today we're going to talk about uh, Access Tuner, the Cobb Access Tuner software. Um, I have my computer loaded up here in front of me. I'm recording here. Um, kind of give you a visual of me talking. Whatever. I'll put it in the small corner of the screen. So most of you will be watching the Access Tuner and uh, as I go through and explain different things about it. Now this is more of a basic, in a basic introduction to it and then we'll kind of hit right fast to the uh, to the uh, more advanced stuff just because that's the whole point of this like anybody can go watch their own cop videos and watch their own stuff and, and get through it so uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get right started so right now it's loaded up um, I'm fully updated to the newest version um, and my access tuner software to reach over to the actual device can't remember the name I have the access port manager that's fully updated and the access port itself has been updated to the newest firmware just to alleviate anything there. That's as of today, 5.17. Um, next thing we're gonna go over is the this is the basic setup of the, of the program. Um, from file here, you can start a new calibration, which basically just starts you from a stock map. You can load one of your own maps or a different map, and then this is where you save. Um, import tables is kind of a cool thing because you can choose two different maps and then kind of import tables to view different comparisons to them and, and whatnot. Um, and then here's more reversion things. Um, edit, this is where you go through into your parameters and you can turn off any codes that you have with the car or if you've made any changes to the car hardware wise, you can turn those codes off here. Next one being the configure options. Uh, this is where you can choose um, gauge and I'll, I'll show you what that means here in a second. But basically this is what the physical um, information that you see when you're monitoring your computer. Log list is exactly what it is. This is what you're logging. Uh, rule of thumb, I think it's, I can't remember, I think it's 14. 12 or 14 is the most you can have going at one time. Uh, otherwise it's, it kind of annoys you and says, hey, you should not go beyond this. You might have um, a lag in the data that you're, you're, you're sending out or you're capturing. So I usually stick around 14, it's a two over um, or under, just to be safe. Um, display, I didn't change much here that I can remember. Keyboard, didn't touch anything there. Logging, this gives you some issues sometimes, but make sure that you're logging to like a regular folder and not a network path or a shared drive or something like that, it, it gives some issues. Um, communication, again, that was just left where it was. And then here is where you choose your AFR gauge, your wideband. In this case, um, I'm using the uh, Innovate. Now, that's an older version of the Innovate, but uh, the concept's the same. It still applies. Um, it's more of like just choosing the port and the one that it connects to. That's if you plug it into the, from the Innovate device, the, the gauge itself, you have a USB cable coming out, or in this case, a serial cable that converts to a USB cable that I plug into my laptop. So I could do what a lot of people do and take a TVG delete or the rear O2 sensor and basically use that signal for the wideband, but I haven't gone that far. I'm not too worried about it yet. Um, future mod maybe. So next few things here, um, yeah, the properties. Uh, simple stuff, whenever I plug it into the car, I get everything going. I pull up the dashboard and I'm just gonna try and connect, but that'll just give me a nice little window um, across the screen and I can drag it wherever I want and it shows me all the information live. Um, that's pretty much it. I do use live tracing and cursor tracing. It took me a while to, f to notice what this was but uh, AEM and a few other manufacturers of standalone ECUs um, use this as like a standard thing but it's kind of cool when you're when you're idling and you're looking at your math sensor um, information you can kind of see what exact voltage that you're sitting at because it kind of highlights the cell that you're in. Um, so it's, it's kind of a cool piece of, um, cool little option that you can use if you need to get some more details. Uh, pretty much it. Compares, just as it sounds, it's it, different things to compare different maps against each other. ECU, basically you plug it in, you connect, then you data log. I don't do any of these because I don't want my laptop failing while I'm flashing. Um, I'd rather use the device to me. It's a, a, another point of failure if I use my laptop. So I just use the actual access port to flash every single time. But it's up to you. Um, trust your laptop, you should be okay. So that's the basics. Um, 
going over the menu here and then all your tables fill here um, and they're pretty much listed based on where they go uh, again not gonna go into too much detail the cool thing about the Cobb access port is you can have real-time tables so all these tables here that have a R in the background so if you look at a table somewhere else like you can see these other ones just have a B and the other ones have an R for real time. Um, so these tables under this list is an easy access real time tables to where you can make these adjustments to the car itself. Um, when you make those adjustments and you're connected down here in the bottom right, you're going to see a blue or a green and a red little square. Green means you're connected. When you're sending data, it'll flash red really quick. It's a pretty quick flash and lets you know that you sent something to it and then it goes back to green kind of give you uh, some information about that. Um, that's basically that. So I don't want to go too much into it, but I just want to go down the tables that are available. Uh, AVCS, I don't do any tuning with that yet. I'm still learning personally, but that's basically, as it says, you can adjust the intake cam. Um, I leave it stock and it's been fine. Uh, boost tables, um, as it says here, boost limiters. You really don't touch too much except for the um, Actually, this is not loading any data. I just realized that. It's not loading my actual map, so I had to load one of my older maps and then revert it back to stock. So these should be the stock readings. If not, they'll be very, very close. So boost limiters, you're not going to do too much. Um, you're just going to define your fuel cut. So um, your boost limit, basically how much boost you want to actually run um, based on your barometric pressure. In this case, on my older map, I was had a fuel cut at 23. Um, you don't mess with too much else of these maps there. Boost target, this is pretty much where you want to hit boost at. Again, you can see this is pretty much where uh, stock is at. And uh, in these certain RPM ranges here, you're targeting certain boosts. And, as you can see, you kind of ramp up to that. So that's one thing to go into. I don't mess with the rest of these that much. Dynamics, again, this is a more in-depth part of um, tuning boost. This part is what I'm now getting into because um, I've, I've hit my, my other tables just fine. Wastegate duty cycle, uh, as it states, um, this was me zeroing them out as I just realized. Let me see if I can get these back. Revert table to stock, yes. And revert this table back to stock. Yes. So as you can see, your um, your, ba your low is basically the lowest wastegate it's going to give. High being the highest. Rule of thumb, I think, is somewhere between 10% difference between these two um, when you do any of the customizations. So this is kind of what controls your wastegate, um, your boost control solenoid. Sorry, from letting pressure through and then opening that wastegate. So this is what controls it and you'll be playing with this a lot so to give you a sim quick simple idea is I, the new turbo I have on the car I pretty much half these numbers um, so that's like just to give you a, a quick idea uh, rest of stuff I don't mess with too much fuel tables you're gonna put a lot of changes in here um, don't mess too much with the actual air fuel changing limits because I'm not affecting too much closed loop you're not gonna do much with closed loop um, the transition, I do have this changed. Um, as you can see, stock on the on the delay counter is 313. I run between 1 and 200, um, depending on what's going on. Um, basically, what happens is, as it states, you'll go from closed loop to open loop a lot faster, meaning the counter to get there, or whatever different parameters you have to hit before it switches over, is lessened. Um, at 100, you're you're pretty you're pretty quick switching I mean a lot of times I'm switching like before I even hit boost which I didn't like too much um, I want to have a little bit of a leaner boost um, up to like maybe five six seven eight psi and then go richer uh, um, that's just the way I'm tuning it for um, maybe right maybe wrong it's what I've learned is what I like what the car is happy with but I run about 150 on average at this number here um, the rest of the ones I don't mess with in the delay, cranking you don't mess with, fuel pump you don't mess with, uh, injectors. This is a whole video in itself, but basically um, if you do aftermarket injectors, you have to adjust your latency, you have to adjust your scale. Um, uh, you will have to adjust this one. You pretty much have to adjust 50% of these tables here to get your 
car up and running. Uh, let's see. So open loop primary. This one is what you'll be uh, touching now. Did I show open loop target? Make sure I show you guys the right one. Yes, yeah, so you zero out these tables here um, for closed loop and that basically tells the car to run open loop. So here's a I don't this ain't stock. I'll tell you that. This ain't this ain't stock stock. Um this is more like stage two. But uh this is a, a general map of how you how you want the car to run fuel um fueling in this case open loop fueling or the whole car fueling from you know, idle all the way up to full full boost and RPMs. This is how the car will will see or expect things to be, and you make the adjustments to match this. That's how I believe I understand that. So if I change this number here, it's not actually going to make the car do anything. What's going to happen is the car is going to target this, and then it's going to, depending on your other parameters that you've adjusted, whatever they could be, that number um, will try and match that. So you'll have commanded fuel, it's something you'll get in your logs. This is where you'll see the commanded fuel, this, this information here. And then what you'll do is, this is your reference, what you want to look for, and then it's easier to look at your logs later, at your commanded fuel, and your actual air fuel ratio, and compare the two. And you're going, okay, it looks like uh, I'm targeting 11.4 AFR at 5600 RPMs at too, uh, too load. Well, I'm actually only getting 10.4 so I need to make an adjustment to hit that 11.4 so that you can hit your proper open loop fueling map um, and you can see here it's you know you, you want to this is just representation uh, the rest of the stuff you can play with um, basically when my in me my car I have it at eight eight eh, 0.85 I believe so yeah 0.85 so if the car drops too low for high detonation It'll trigger my dam to drop to pull timing to pull everything else. Um, some say that's a little uh, very, it's a little sensitive. You know, you should drop it a little bit lower. Uh, I'd rather not blow my engine, so I'd rather the car detune itself to save it than to actually blow the engine and have more power. In that case, so that's that's just my personal way. Um, this next part is going into if it does drop, it's going to lower the fuel, as you can see here. Rest of these things, I don't think I played with too much. Miscellaneous, no. No. Tip and enrichment, something else we'll go into. But basically, as soon as you hit the gas, um, this is going to be how much gas it dumps first um, to kind of compensate for the initial boost that you're giving it, or the power that you're giving it. Um, that's a little bit tricky to tune because I don't think there's a good concrete way in tuning it. Um, the internet will kind of has their own view about about it. Um, right now, I'm I'm still kind of learning and adjusting this table as we go. Uh, let's see here. Next few tables. I want to make this video too long, but idle control is exactly how it is. What are you targeting at for idle? Um, I've changed this to about 800 RPMs once it warms up. Ignition tables. Uh, primary ignition exactly how it sounds. This is the the base ignition that you're going to target. Uh, in this case, you know when you're under a certain load, it's going to target certain um, timing. Uh, you set a base, and then you use the dynamic advance tables here. In this case, the um, the high and low, uh, the max primary, not the adder, but the max primary, the high and low. So this is that you know. When you have low knock or no knock, this is what the car can give itself. Um, at high knock, the car can give itself, you know, in this case, higher knock, up to five, almost five uh, timing, uh, degrees of timing. And the same spot here can give more almost 10 degrees of timing. So that's the one cool thing about Subaru. Um, they allow the car to learn itself, you know, more so than the tuner. You can uh, give it a set boundary plus or minus and let the car make adjustments you will see knock and you will see the car pull timing uh, that's one thing you'll have to learn to um, just say it's okay um, but definitely this is where you control it so if you're seeing too much you can make the adjustments so what I like to do is keep these numbers smaller and make adjustments first 
to my actual primary ignition, get those numbers pretty solid, and then use these numbers here to give the car um, excuse me, some extra timing if it wants it to do it. Because you don't want to have this at like one or two in, in the bigger ranges, because you need the car to pull timing as well too. The guides that I, that I use will kind of explain this in more detail. This table you're going to zero out because you don't want, in this case, you have one and then two and technically three different ways that not can be um, changed, or sorry, timing can be changed. You don't want a fourth way. So this table gets zeroed out and we kind of ignore it. Um, again, the guides I will, I will post up will kind of say the same thing. So these tables you'll be playing with a lot to get things dialed in. Um, quick little uh, plug here. Um, I am using the Cobb Stage 2 timing and have made slight adjustments to it, but I haven't really done, excuse me, I haven't really done much uh, changes to the timing to uh, increase power there, because I'm still kind of getting things worked out. Launch control is exactly like it sounds. Um, you can make your adjustments here on what you want the car to start at, and you can make adjustments on the actual access to or access port. But you can give your uh, your numbers here. Limiters, um, you're gonna set this to about 500 just so you have room. Miscellaneous tables, no, you don't mess with that. Sensor calibrations. So that's where you'll, you'll adjust the MAF sensor. And that's pretty much it for a quick rundown. Uh, gonna go into the real time tables. Uh, boost controls, where you're gonna change your boost, boost target, you'll, you can mess with this one. Um, these two, you're going to change in real time. Knock learning, this is a, how can you say it? It's like a, a, a live, but ever changing table that you can look at and then hit F5 to refresh the table. And it kind of gives you an idea of where you're having fine knock. And that's something we'll go into later. Uh, fuel injector let's see, you don't have to mess with that. This is just good for tuning injectors. Math calibration, you'll spend a lot of time in, especially when you're driving around for those 30 plus hours to tune the car. Um, this is again close to stock, but this is you know two one eight. This is two four five. This might become two one two and two three five. You know, or, or two two five and two fifty five. So I mean, these numbers can really change to help control the idle. While you're gonna learn about adding and taking away um, these numbers artificially to control how you want it to do. So the best way to look at it is if you increase the number. You're increasing air, which means the car is going to increase fuel. If you decrease this number, you're telling the car you have less air, therefore it's going to put less fuel. It took me a few times to actually see the difference in the backwards way of the thinking behind it. Uh, I would increase because I'm like, oh, I need more fuel, but not less air, and I'd mess it all up. Whatever. So you learn that stuff. Uh, primary ignition and a few other tables. So these, there's a few tables here you'll use where you're actually live tuning. So that's kind of the quick rundown. Um, I know it was quick and fast. I want to get this video out there and show, show an introduction so that you're not scared when you see it. So if you have any questions about what I'm saying, you know, put them in the comments. I'll go over whatever I need to. Um, this, I'll take each, almost each tab that I've touched and at least go into some detail of its own video to explain what I've done and what I've learned about it. Um, but I do want to drive the car some more and I want to make some more videos with that too. But here will be the, the first introduction video to, to get things going. Um, so on to the next video.